so the thing about um, gender is that it is separate from your body parts. And that's a very difficult concept for some people to accept. Um, but I've always been a girl, right? I just didn't always realize it. Um, some people realize it when they're like three or four years old, right? They realize they're different and that everyone says you're a boy, but no, actually, I don't feel like a boy, mom. I don't feel like a boy. Or they say you're a girl and like, I'm ah, not a girl, right? Um, but some people like me don't realize until later in life. And that's totally okay too. That's very valid. Um, I realized there was kind of like a, a thing in my, in the back of my, my head that was like, hey, Lily, and I, of course, at the time didn't call myself Lily, but I didn't really... I wasn't happy and there was something that you know like a kind of like a an, an, an inclination somewhere back there that was hey if you uh, maybe got like a dress or a sports bra or something maybe like some you know pink, something pink I'm interested in men or women I'm interested in femmes so women mostly but you know non-binary femmes as well what did you say? What the f did you just say? I've always been a girl, right? Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. All I can think of when I see a TikTok of that fella, Lily, we just heard from with his little white dog, is how in the movie Silence of the Lambs, the one and only Buffalo Bill always had his little white dog precious with him. Is this what they mean by life imitating art? It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So I have a fairly quick and very crazy clown world update for you guys today. And as usual, we have, well, very little time to waste. So let's get into it. Now, if you place your attention on the screen for a moment. So this is Jessica. Now, Jessica is a biological man who identifies as a trans woman and calls himself a transbian or trans lesbian. Now, Jessica posted this photo in the trans woman support group. The caption says, I am so happy to finally be myself and I think I look passable with very little makeup on. What? You look ridiculous. Let's keep this party rolling with this clip from famous Hollywood actor Robert De Niro showing the world that he still suffers from a severe, severe case of TDS, also known as Trump Derangement Syndrome. And it's a shame, really, because he's been in some fantastic movies. Casino, Heat, Goodfellas. But I guess that's why they say you got to separate the art from the artist. Because a nonsense like this, roll it. Stupid. He's a punk. He's a dog. He's a pig. He's a con, a bullshit artist, a mutt who doesn't know what he's talking about, doesn't do his homework, doesn't care, thinks he's gaming society, doesn't pay his taxes. He's an idiot. Colin Powell said it best. He's a national disaster. He's an embarrassment to this country. It makes me so angry that this country has gotten to this point, that this fool, this bozo, has wound up where he has. He talks how he wants to people in the face. Well, I'd like to him in the face. This is somebody that we want for president? I don't think so. What I care about is the direction of this country. And what I'm very, very worried about is that it might go in the wrong direction with someone like Donald Trump. If you care about your future, vote for it. You're, you're a f***ing idiot. Let's stick with politics for a moment. Now, this next clip is kind of long. It's about two minutes long, but it's worth the watch because it is a perfect example of what happens to someone's brain when the only sources of their news are mainstream media outlets like CNN, MSNBC, and such. Roll it. Y'all, I'm just going to be honest. I need some help understanding why in the polls it appears that there are still enough people who perhaps would vote for Trump over Biden for president. 
while I would not deny at all <laughs> that I would not necessarily want Biden, but he's a heck of a lot better choice, in my humble opinion, than Trump. I've just got to know, um, who out there wants the person to be in office who tried to overthrow the government once already and rob people of their legitimate votes? Who wants someone in office who has already said they want to be a dictator for a day? Who wants somebody in office who has made fun of a disabled reporter, said that he wants to grab women by the bleep, who is responsible for the deaths of several police officers who were trying to protect people on January 6th, who was responsible for inciting those who did that violence, who was responsible for many hate crimes. I'll be honest, as a teacher, I have most definitely seen an increase or did see an increase in hatefulness of minorities during the years Trump was in office and for a couple years following. I feel like this year, finally, it's becoming less so again. I, I just don't get it. Can somebody please explain to me? And if you have any tips for how I could be a part of influencing friends, family, or through social media, has anybody out there had success in at least getting people to open their eyes and start to realize you are following the leader of your cult? Oh, shut up, silly woman. Unbelievable. I mean, that lady believes a bunch of shit that just isn't true. Anyway, real quick, guys, I just wanted to let you know that if you're enjoying the videos, you like the content, and you want to help support the channel, and you want to piss off the likes of Robert De Niro and that lady we just heard from, grabbing one of these t-shirts is a great way to do it. And here it is, the Revenge Tour 2024 Mugshot t-shirt. Now, this is the most famous mugshot in the history of all mugshots. So if you want to grab yourself a little piece of history, I will put a link to the t-shirt in the description box below. I also have some other very cool designs you can check out as well. Mm, nice. Very nice. All right. What you're about to see in this next clip is a direct result of the body positivity movement, also known as the fat acceptance movement. Roll it. We're fat. Our bed is going to make noise when we're in it. <coughs> we're fat. Of course we lean while doing the dishes. Damn. We're fat. We love to eat at all you can eat food places. We're fat. Of course we have snacks in our bag. Because we're hungry. Eat vegetable. <laughs> eat broccoli. And speaking of the body positivity movement, Sometimes the jokes just write themselves. Roll it. You want one cookie or double it and pass it forward? Pass it forward. Do you guys want two cookies or pass it forward? Pass it forward. forward. Do you want four cookies or double it and pass it forward? For sure, double it and give it to someone else. Do you want eight cookies or double it and pass it forward? I'll take it, I guess. Grab all of them? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. Was she a great big fat person? Now, I know it's very easy to lose hope when watching these videos and your faith in humanity probably goes right out the window. But don't get too down. Don't get too depressed. Do exactly what this gentleman says and it is sure to boost your spirits. Roll it. Whenever you get upset, I want you to say, boom, boom, shakalaka, boom, boom, catch up with the mustard. And watch, I bet you'll feel better. And say it with energy. Say, boom, boom, shakalaka, catch up with the mustard. Yes, baby. What the f*** are you talking about? Hmm. What the f*** are you talking about? Now, personally, I think it is impossible to actually stay in a bad mood if you say, with energy, boom, boom, shakalaka, boom, boom, catch up with the mustard. With energy, though. Anyway, next up, so this is probably the most disturbing thing you're going to hear all day. And what's most disturbing about it is that medical institutions are putting out these studies, none of which I believe a f***ing word of. Roll it! Hi, my name's Ash and welcome to LGBTQ plus birth research. Today's video signposts a case study where breast milk produced by a trans woman after she successfully induced lactation was analysed for its nutritional qualities. 
This study centres a trans woman who successfully breastfed her baby. She induced lactation via hormone therapy using Domperidon as a galactagogue, breast pumping and then directly breastfeeding her infant. She co-fed with her partner, the baby's gestational parent, meaning the parent who carried the pregnancy, for the infant's first four months of life. The decision to stop breastfeeding was maternal choice. The medical management of how lactation was induced, including medications, dosages and timings, are outlined in the study. For milk analysis, the mother provided four samples of frozen expressed breast milk, and each sample was collected approximately one month apart. All samples were warmed, hand agitated and analysed using a form of infrared spectroscopy. All samples were run twice and a mean result was generated. When compared with average nutritional values of breast milk expressed by cisgender women 10 to 12 weeks after delivery, values that were taken from a large systematic review of milk analysis, these breast milk samples showed nutritional values that were equal to or higher for fat, protein, lactose and calories. Alongside this analysis, the study includes details of the mother's experience of breastfeeding her baby. She describes it as both, quote, emotionally fulfilling and pragmatic, and talks about the positive benefits for her partner too, including her getting more sleep. The paper concludes, and this is a long quotation, these findings provide reassurance about the adequacy of nutrition from human milk produced by non-gestational, transgender female and non-binary parents on oestrogen-based, gender-affirming hormone therapy and support the importance of this experience on a personal level, end quote. Family structures are evolving and healthcare professionals should be able to support non-gestational parents who wish to breast or chest feed their infants. Trans non-binary and gender non-conforming people should be included in research on lactation. Meanwhile, now, a transgender woman's milk is just as good for babies as breast milk. That's according to a letter from the medical director at University Hospital Sussex NHS Foundation Trust. The claim was made as part of a response against campaign groups. The trust referred to studies and the World Health Organization guidance, including one case which found what it called no observable effects in babies fed by induced lactation. Bullshit. Total bullshit. Hey, real quick, before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of today's video. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to let this loop on the screen now. It looks like she's having a good time, right? I don't know why she's dancing in the middle of a flea market in front of all these people, but hey, she's having fun. She's got better moves than I do. So I say, young lady, go ahead and shake what your mama gave you. Anyway, today's video is being brought to us by our first sponsor is Holden. Holden, thank you so much, sir, for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate the kind words and support. Second sponsor of today's video is none other than our great friend, Coda320. Once again, and as always, sir, thank you so much for your kindness, generosity, and support. It's truly appreciated. And I know I say this every time he sponsors a video, but Coda320 is just one of those people that keeps my faith in humanity alive. So. Once again, today's video sponsors are Holden and Coda320. Now, if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below, and I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video, unless stated otherwise by you. All right, I think we've seen enough. Get this off the screen, please. Yeah, she was a big girl, sir. All right, next up we have the pronoun girl, a.k.a. lesbian Snow White. Now, here she's complaining about cis men going into lesbian bars and taking up lesbian spaces. What I don't understand is why isn't she complaining about the trans women who call themselves lesbians and go into these bars? I don't know too many cis men that go into lesbian bars, but as we've seen here on this channel... There sure are a lot of trans women who call themselves trans beings and lesbians that go into these bars, so she might want to focus on that instead. Roll it. This is a message to cis men. I'm not too familiar with this interaction because I usually don't talk to cis men. However, I do feel like it's important. So hi, sissies. No, just jokes. <laughs> so cis men, when you are invited by a straight woman to a lesbian bar, and yes, this is in regard to the straight woman who invited a cis man to a lesbian bar and all the stitches that came from it. Okay, first of all, 
you can always say, no, we shouldn't go, you know? And suggest to go to a straight bar across the street with your straight woman so she won't feel the need to pop off on a lesbian and defend the patriarchy. Ooh, and sometimes it's hard to do that for straight women, and that's a whole issue in itself. And if you don't feel like saying no, well, stop being so creepy in general, not just at a lesbian bar. And stop taking up space in a place that's not your own. You know what I mean? I mean, we still have to wear these masks because of the patriarchy failing the world. And honestly, your presence only reminds us of this. Lesbian bars are here for us to take a serious break from y'all. Like, this is our wellness checkup, where we can cry in each other's arms for things to get better, and where we would not be afraid to express our hyper-femininity or our non-toxic masculinity, which is so important for us to see. So, main point is, let's not take up each other's spaces. And there's not very many lesbian spaces. I don't even have a lesbian space in my hometown or anything like that. I would have to travel hours. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have one, but I would love one. And if I did have one, please don't take up the space. What the hell did you just say? I mean, we still have to wear these masks because of the patriarchy failing the world. And honestly, your presence only reminds us of this. What the f*** does that even mean? I, I don't even f understand what that means. That sounds like some bullshit to me. All right, guys, we're going to be wrapping it up with this clip, and I'm going to say this again. I feel like I'm saying it far too often lately, but this is not a parody skit. This is not a clip from SNL. This is real life. This is a Minnesota state representative, nice job, Minnesota, who is a biological man that identifies as a trans woman. I think the name is Lee Finky or something like that. So Lee Finky wants to amend Minnesota's state constitution to cement the rights of non-binary and two-spirit people. This is where we're at. Anyway, things are clearly getting crazy out there, guys. So please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. Love you guys. Peace. Roll it. Sure that trans people are afforded a full and equal access to protections in perpetuity, which is why we must pass a fully inclusive equal rights amendment this year. Minnesota has a chance to cement the rights of trans, non-binary, two-spirit, and intersex individuals in our state constitution in what would be a nation-leading initiative to protect queer and intersex people. Passage of a trans-inclusive ERA and the long-term protection of trans rights is crucial for the long-term health and safety of my community and of all of our communities. And I look forward to working with Representative Herr, thank you for joining us today, and Senator Kunesh, to make that happen. Um, can you repeat the part of the stuff where you said all about the things? Uh, the things? Minnesota has a chance to cement the rights of trans, non-binary, two-spirit... Wow! The land of make-believe! And you ain't black.